Good morning, everybody. It's early. I'm at home. And I'm about to head to the truck. I gotta go bobtail into Winnipeg, pick up a trailer, and head down to Minnesota so I can be back for tonight. First thing in the morning, come on, CN. Come on. There's a sign right there that says, do not block tracks. Someone didn't tell the train driver he's blocking it. Okay, maybe that wasn't funny. Sometimes, you know, you, you know that feeling when you tell a joke and you immediately knew it was a swing and a miss? Yeah, I have a lot of those. A lot of those get cut out. Sometimes I just leave them in like that. I'll leave them there for you because maybe you want to take them and try them on your kids. It's like a dad joke attempt, right? And sometimes it's just, it, it even fails that metric. That's okay. This train's not even that long. Look at this. These are uh, what, empty like, automobile car, uh, train cars. Car, train cars. Car train cars. Train, train car for cars. That was a really short one, actually. That wasn't so bad. Nothing to complain about. This guy's a bumper sticker. It says, warning, driver is feral. Well, thanks for the warning, sir. Or ma'am. I think a lot more people need those bumper sticks. We just start handing those things out. <laughs> well, give her, man. Give her, give her, give her, give her, give her, give her, give her. Oh boy, this highway's a little busy this time of day. There's our load right there. It's gonna be nice and easy to tie it down by the looks of it. Not wide and not long. Right on, let's get this done. I decided to take US 59 south down towards Park Rapids. It's a little bit shorter. It would have been faster to take I-29 down to Grand Forks if I could do 75 mile an hour speed limit. But since we're limited to it a little bit uh, lower than that, plus that's way too much fuel for me to burn. Traveling 75 mile an hour in a truck, especially a W9 that's like a brick wall going through the wind, you burn like twice as much fuel. Maybe not quite, but you know what I mean, you burn a lot more fuel. I like to run around 62 to 65 miles an hour. That's where my peak fuel economy is for the speed I get. So anyway, I'm, I'm driving the same speed here as I would there, and it's shorter. I gotta go through a few small towns, so that's not a big deal. We should be arriving there at about 4, 4.30. And they're waiting for me there, or they will be waiting. We're gonna roll this freight off the trailer, put it on the ground, and head back home. Since I'm empty, I'll be able to cross back from Lancaster, Minnesota, uh, it's a Tolstoy, Manitoba. It's a non-commercial crossing. So when I have freight on my trailer, I can't cross there. But when I'm empty, I can go through there. It's kind of nice. It uh, cuts some more time off my drive back. But as I'm saying this, I actually just realized I wanted to fuel up in Grand Forks because the, fuel, the price of fuel there is so much cheaper than anywhere else. Shoot. Okay, well, I might have just changed my mind in the middle of talking to you guys about what I'm going to do. I think we'll still cross through Emerson, Manitoba from Pemina. That's the commercial crossing, even though I'm empty, because that way it'll bring me past Flying J in Grand Forks. Uh, the price of fuel there, I'll do the math yet before I actually do this, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that I will more than save, uh, that I'll save more money going a little bit further out of my way to fuel up at Grand Forks. I'll figure it out once I'm empty. 
it's the life of a truck driver, uh, owner operator. You got to think of these things and every day. You sort of got to balance taking the shortest route with the fastest route and also the cheapest route, depending on where your cheapest fuel will be. Every day. Got to stay on top of it. I'm here to make money. I don't want to lie about that. I don't want anybody to have any other misconceptions. I'm here to make money for profit. I need to put food in my kid's belly. I keep a roof over their head. Plus, I still want to go to Disney World with them one day. I want to take my kid and my family there. So every day is a constant, a constant battle to find how to get the work done as fast as possible, as cheap as possible, while making the most amount of money. It feels a lot later than it is. It's only three o'clock. I'm gonna be a little early. I, I told him I was gonna be there at 4 30. Because I, I knew I'd probably be there around 4, but I wanted to give myself that extra half hour just in case something happened. So it looks like I probably will be there around 4 o'clock, so I'll give them a call uh, in about a half hour, let them know that I'm 30 minutes out, and I can wait there for a half hour if I have to. I don't mind being, being that early, but if, if possible, we can get unloaded and be out of there by 4.30. 300 meters, turn right on, Main Avenue South, and then 92.
boat launch, I mean boat launch, paved boat launch. Oh yeah, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be down here somewhere. Right, oh boy, there's a tree in my lane. Let's go around that. Oh, here we go, there's the site. Okay. Park off to the side here. Figure out where they want me. All right, trailer's empty, all locked up, stretched back out. The axles, I mean, put the back door they should be. My load's right there, and a couple of those boxes, four of them right there as well ready for their project whenever they want to get to it. That's right where we wanted it. It was a bit funky getting in there because of this mud hole here. But, uh, oh, we made it work and we got it out of the mud and onto the drier, drier area up there on the higher ground. Let's get going, let's go home. It's gonna be late. but I'm gonna fuel in Thief River Falls and go up 59. That'll save me an hour. I'll get home an hour earlier that way. Most days I would go around for the cheaper fuel but it's the end of the week and I really want to get home. I've already got to leave early on Sunday so I'm only home for part of the weekend, most of the weekend but I just want to go home. It's Friday. I'm gonna get home like midnight still. I was gonna save myself about $50 or so, 40 to $50 by going around to Grand Forks. But I just decided, you know what? Today, not every day, but today I'm willing to sacrifice that so that I can get home a little sooner. Continue on this road for 48 kilometers. Manitoba. 
Manitoba Canadian side. It's a non-commercial crossing. I already explained this to you earlier. But my trailer's empty, so they're open till 10, and it is quarter after 9. They shouldn't still be there. I think the, the American side closes at 6. The Canadian side is open till 10 for some reason. We'll, we'll see if that's true. I hope so, otherwise I gotta go all the way back around. I wasted all this time. Is it open? It's supposed to be open. I don't see any gate in front of the entrance here. Oh, this is the US side. Usually if it's closed, they'll shut the road down right here. Or just ahead. All the signs say 10 o'clock, and even online on Google it says that it's open till 10 o'clock. Yeah, here, see, these gates are open. There's the US side, and uh, there's the Canadian side over there. Yep, gates are open. Good. Nice. Saved myself an hour by coming through this direction. I gotta park on the side here and go walk in. I think this is getting a little out of control now. Especially this rim. Remember that mud hole I was delivering into there? This tire sunk in a little bit and man, I think it's time for a path. I've been putting it off for too long. Much too long. Yeah, I've been putting it off far too long. Yeeks. I know it's that season, but it's not that that season yet. I mean, there's not even any snow on the ground, which is weird, right? Usually we have snow on the ground. It's been a pretty mild fall. And you can cue all the apocalyptic doomsday sayers in the comment section now. We're all doomed. There's no snow yet. Tis a sign the end is nigh. Walk her down. I think that's it. All right, Blue, you have a good weekend, all right? You take care of yourself. You can have some friends over if you want. But no big parties, okay? I don't want to call from the cops again. You... Calm down a little bit. You can't blame everything on Rockwood either over there, okay? These guys always partying every weekend. Well... This Black Hawk steer is still doing very good for me, wearing nice and even. I'm liking it a lot. Like I said uh, last time, I am now a believer in these Black Hawk tires. They're half the price and they wear and work just as good and evenly as the brand name tires that I used to buy, like BF Goodrich and Michelin and Firestone. So I mean, if those brand name tires want to keep my business, they're gonna have to find a way to cut their prices in half because they've priced themselves out of the market. With the cost of living today, especially up here in the north where I'm from, ain't nobody can afford that price, man. No one can afford your price. What are you charging so much? How Why? You gotta figure it out. You know, I don't care what the excuse is. Oh, this, oh, that. Oh, it's probably this, it's probably, I don't care. I'm still going to buy the cheaper tires because they're just as good and they're cheaper. Because I like eating and I want to keep food in my refrigerator. And if I buy your brand name tires, I have tires, but I don't have food. I'd like to have both. So if the good people over there at uh, the other brands could have a little, uh, you know, fireside chat, maybe a little kumbaya moment, maybe, maybe a little, you know, a little a meeting of some sort and just like figure it out that'd be great until then you'll find me in the offshore section okay let's go home everybody